Okay, now we're ready for our second unit of this uh, online series of lectures. And the first thing we're gonna go through is how do you create threads in OpenMP? It's a multi-threaded programming environment. Nothing interesting happens until you create threads. So let's talk about that. The fundamental model behind OpenMP is something we call the fork join model. This is used in OpenMP, and just for those of you who are ringers and have done a little bit more parallel programming, this is also at the core of what you do with when you write pthreads programs. And actually, when people work with Silk, they do this a lot as well. So this is a very general concept, but it's very deeply ingrained into what we do with OpenMP. Here's the idea. Your program starts as a single thread. We're gonna call that the master thread. It's working through the program, and then it comes to some point in the execution where additional threads could help out. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna fork a number of threads at that point. So now you've just gone from a serial part of the program to a parallel region. So you create a block of threads. Now, the master thread continues out of that block of threads, and it has ID zero. And then the other threads go, you know, ID one, two, three, up to the number of threads minus one. We call that collection of threads a team of threads. So now the team of threads will work together in parallel. I've exposed concurrency in my program. I map those, that concurrency onto the team of threads. They execute in parallel. When they finish their work, so now they finish whatever it was in the program that made sense to do in parallel. When they finish, they join back together again and you're left with one thread again. Now that one thread, the master, the same thread as before, continues right along until it sees another portion of the problem where multiple threads would make sense. Fork off a bunch of threads, create another team. It doesn't have to be the same number. It can be a different number of threads from one team to the next. They'll go off and work, and then when they're done, they join back together. So I think you see the pattern here that you move along, you fork threads, join threads, keep going, fork threads, join threads. So you have a series of sequential parts of the program and parallel regions all the way through to the end. You can even nest threads. So inside a parallel region, a thread in the team could say, hey, I could use even more threads. So it could fork off its own team of threads. So there's, in principle, you could nest these as many levels deep as, as the system will support. So this is the fundamental construct in, uh, in OpenMP for creating threads. And you do it with the Pragma OMP parallel construct. You've already been introduced to this. In fact, you've already written it into your compiler and ran it because you used it in a low world. So let's look into this in a little bit more detail and see exactly how we use it. So I want to emphasize the only way to create threads in OpenMP is with a parallel construct. If there's no OMP parallel Pragma somewhere in your program, you're not having multiple threads. So here's what we got here. I have a little sample program here where I declare an array, double A of 1,000, and then I'm gonna ask for a number of threads, OMP set num threads. So this is the first time you've seen this runtime library routine, so let me warn you about it. It sets the number of threads, it requests a number of threads. So I've written right into the code, I would like four threads, please. So now I come to the pragma, pragma OMP parallel. That says fork, a number of threads. What number of threads? Well, I asked for four, so we'll try to fork a team of four threads. Now, each thread will run the code in that structured block. Each thread, in this case, will allocate an integer called ID. Each thread will call that runtime function, OMP get thread num to get the ID. And then each thread will call this function, poo, for ID, taking in the array A. All right, now let's go through this in a little bit more detail as we look at how it executes. So here I have that same code, and I want to look at what happens with the data. All right, now, to a first order of approximation, if I allocate data outside the pragma OMP parallel, that data sits on the heap, and it's visible to all the threads. If I allocate the data inside the pragma OMP parallel, it is allocated on the thread's individual stack. It is local to the thread, or in OpenMP jargon, we say that it is private to that thread. So now in that example I gave you, where we had you know, the double A of 1,000, then the pragma OMP, then inside that structured block, I have int ID. All right, what we're gonna have 
is all the threads see the same array A, but each thread has its own copy of ID. So now I have each thread calling the function poo, but in one case it's calling poo with ID zero array A. The next thread's gonna call it with ID one array A. And it's the same array A for each one and a local copy of ID for each one. So that's how it works, each thread redundantly running the same code. Now, what does the compiler do? What you have to remember is with OpenMP, it's a partnership between you, the programmer, and the compiler. The pragmas tell the compiler what to do. It's explicit. There's nothing magic happening, but you're still telling the compiler, do something. And for those of you who know a little bit more about compilers, I want to take just a moment to go into this to understand it. So here's what it would look like if I took that pragma OMP parallel with just a simple function call, foobar in this case, and what's the compiler going to translate that to on your behalf? And that's the show code I show here on the side. And I'm showing you the pthreads code, because often that's what OpenMP does, especially on a Linux or uh, OS X environment, is it's calling underneath OpenMP the pthreads. It's just pthreads API is very low level, and most programmers don't want to deal with it. So this is cool. The pragma lets the system deal with that low level details for you. So it's going to take the body of the structured block, it's going to package it into a function, and for reasons I don't begin to understand, you compiler people like to call that generated function a thunk. Uh, it's a word they like to use, so we'll use it. So you generate a function, the compiler will generate a function unbeknownst to you behind the scenes called a thunk. Then what it's going to do is it's going to set up the pthreads environment, as we show in this code right here, and it's going to launch a pthread running a copy of thunk. And then after it does it, it's going to have the master thread that just launched all those threads, it's going to itself turn around and call thunk. Because remember, when, you, when a thread creates a team of threads, it will run and become thread zero in that team. So after it launches all the threads, it then calls thunk running itself. So I hope this detail hasn't gotten, you know, I guess if your head's swimming at this level of detail, don't worry about it too much. I put this here for you computer scientists going through this who probably want to have a little bit deeper understanding of how OpenMP compilers interact with the lower level runtime. So we're going to use a running example as we go through the next several modules. This is often called the Hello World program of parallel computing. What it is is, we are going to integrate the function 4 over 1 plus x squared from 0 to 1. And the beautiful thing about this function is if you have the exact integral, it is equal to pi, which is really nice because if we solve this numerically, we have a way of checking the answer. Your answer better look like the number pi. Now, the way we're going to solve this is by a very straightforward numerical integration, where we're going to take the area under the curve of this function, and we're going to represent it as a whole series of rectangles. So then I'll sum up the area of those rectangles, which will give me an approximation of the area under the curve. And if you remember back to far back in kindergarten when you studied calculus, you will remember that the area under the curve is equal to the integral. So this gives me a way to replace the integral with the summation. Now, what this looks like in code is right here. And this is a very simple program. You can download it from the set of exercises, or for some of you, it's just easier just to type the thing in yourself. Very, very easy. So you just got to set the number of steps, which needs to be a big number. You need to set up the step size, and then you need to set up the, uh, this loop, and you're going to loop over from zero to less than the number of steps. And inside, I'm going to compute the value of x at the middle of that rectangle. I will then take the uh, height of that rectangle. I'll sum them all together. I'll multiply by the constant step size when I'm done, and that should give me an approximation to pi. And we're going to use this program and again and again, and the reason we like it is it's about the simplest program I know of that you can write and check the answer, and then it will actually run faster and faster as you use threads. So that's really cool. So now we're going to come to your first true, honest to goodness, you're going to have to think about it, parallel program. I want you, using just what we've discussed so far, to create a parallel version of this Pi program. Now let me be abundantly clear. All I want you to use is a pragma OMP parallel. So you need to understand how I can put a pragma OMP parallel into that function in order to create a parallel version of it. Now you're going to need to use some runtime library routines, and we've talked about most of them. 
OMP get num threads to ask how many threads do I have? OMP get thread num to say what is my thread ID? Now there's another function that we haven't shown you yet, but it's actually really handy. It's a function that returns a double, and it's OMP underscore get w time. And what it will do is it will return a double for the number of seconds since some fixed point in the past. So if I call OMP get w time before my pragma OMP parallel, and if I call it after my parallel block is done, that difference is how much time I spent inside that block of code. So this will let you track the time. Probably something similar to this you've used before. So this is your exercise. I want you to go off and take some time to write this and debug it. And I'm going to warn you, there's a few gotchas I've set up in here. So unless, if, if you're truly new to parallel programming, this, this one's going to be kind of challenging. So this brings us to the end of this module. I'll look forward to seeing you later when we discuss the results.